Men who have been raped by women, what is your story? I wouldn't call it full on rape, but I was sexually assaulted by a friend, now ex-friend, who pitied me for being a little person and thought I'd never get any, so she might as well, do me a favor, even when I kept saying no and pushing her away. Most ITT say, it wasn't rape but, and then proceed to describe rape. That's the level at which society denies male rape. The victims doubt themselves. As someone who works in a rape crisis center, I want you all to know there is support for you. And your feelings are normal. Your experiences are real and should not be minimized. Edit. Had some typos a very nice person pointed out. Thankful for that. Went to visit my family in Canada and I was a 8 so I didn't fully understand what my half-sister did to me until way later when it crossed my mind and I felt more angry than anything. I just know that after 50 hours awake studying for finals I went to a university party and woke up with her writing me, felt disgusted and violated pushed her out, put her out of my dorm room made a formal complaint to the university and police only to feel ridiculous and to become the joke, because a beautiful green eyes girl could never rape a tall black man. Worse she tried to shift the story and people started believing her quickly. Lucky me to have cameras at the dorm as proof. Been sexually assaulted fucking loads of times when I was an 18-year-old boy working in a nightclub. The amount of women who grabbed my dick and squeezed my ass as I walked by was unreal. Even had one drunk chick push me into cloakroom and pull my dick out to suck it. But ya yeah, know, I am a guy so what am I complaining about right? A 50-ish year old man pushing an 18-year-old girl into a cloakroom and starts giving her unwanted oral sex equals outrage. But when it's a 50-ish year old woman doing it to an 18-year-old boy, nothing. You're getting your dick sucked. What are you complaining about? Is what everyone said. Except my girlfriend at the time who said, you cheated on me? Was raped by my teacher in 8th grade. My friends were calling me lucky because she was kinda hot but. A. My aunt took me to parties with a bunch of her friends when I was 7. They would gang rape me. It wasn't just women but two men as well. They continued raping me until I dissociated so hard that I stopped moving they didn't like that so they would stop. They really liked to hear me say no. It happened for six months about two times a month until my aunt died. I know all their faces. My aunt, a nurse, a cop, a lawyer, and a local newswoman. I'll never forget their faces. It's hard for me to talk about but I mention it to my significant other as the circus, because they were all clowns. My story probably won't be as crazy as others but something I just feel like sharing. My last relationship was with a girl who had the idea that if we weren't having sex at least once a day then I was cheating on her and that was definitive proof. There were days I was sick or tired or depressed and just didn't want to but on those few days she would break things, she would threaten to kill herself, she would disappear for hours and leave me scary voicemail, she would also hit me with things, or use knives, scissors, tools, or one time broken glass. After a while it just turned into her taking advantage of me. I didn't want to be screamed at anymore and I didn't want her to attack me or herself. To this day I still feel shitty about myself over it. Went to a friend's house wasn't planning on drinking, ended up drinking so I stayed in the spare room, wasn't intoxicated, but I choose not to drink drive anytime I have a drink. I went to bed alone and left the rest to party. I woke up with a woman from the party riding me. Fresh out of high school I dated a 25 year old. Her friends were getting married off and one of them was having a baby. We were having sex where she was on top. We never used protection but I was good at pulling out and would always let her know beforehand. I told her and instead of getting off she held my wrists and grinded into me. I was pretty shocked and before I realized what exactly was happening I had finished. Felt pretty betrayed there and for a good while was really paranoid with girls after that. Always would use a condom and specifically tried to hide the condom afterward because the paranoid thought they would insert the semen made me really anxious. We were kinda having a fling, and one evening we got drunk and smoked a little. She had expressed sexual desires earlier that evening so not surprised she was acting horny af. However, she kinda got a little crazy when I couldn't get it up because I was high as fuck and it didn't seem she heard my words of stop so she kept aggressively humping my dick when limp. I don't know if this qualifies though, considering no penetration was involved. Also, I don't hold it against her. I mean she was high as fuck and probably just in her own world fueled by sexual desire. Though it wasn't a good experience for me. I guess attempted rape? She was very drunk. I was somewhat drunk. We were both teenagers. She wouldn't take no for an answer. She eventually passed out. I was still a virgin and didn't want to lose it like that. 
I was 14, she was 2, she wanted to have sex and I didn't. We had sex. The fun part is that a super, woke, feminist friend of mine says it wasn't rape since I had a hard on, double standard much? I was little, about 5 years old. She was the replacement of our regular in housemaid. She would put me in my bed, and she would take off her bottoms and sit on me. Later in life I've told people around me about what happened to me several times, and while everyone thinks that what happened was fucked up and criminal, I've never been comforted, or actually felt real compassion from someone for what happened to me. The result of it is they I know that I am a different person than most people because I was raped by a woman as a child. And I will always be different in that way. Got jerked off by a lady 3045 when I was 13 on an airplane flight and at the time, thought it was cool. But now, in hindsight, she molested me. Fucked up. I once went on a date with a girl. We had some drinks and got a bit tipsy and ended the date with a walk in the park at night. We ended up making out on the grass and she got on top of me, then started undoing my jeans. I said no several times but she kept shrugging it off. I even said we should wait and she insisted the moon made the situation very romantic. What happened after was the most uncomfortable sex I've ever had which resulted with her coming and rolling off me not interested in carrying on. I didn't even think of it as anything weird until I got older. Reading these stories is shocking. I mean I knew rape of men by women existed but some of these stories are downright brutal. After reading such stories, if someone asks me if I would beat a woman to a pulp if she was trying to rape me, I say yes, I absolutely would. Fuck rapists, no matter their gender. All I can say it's horrible no matter what or who is raped. It's a horrible experience I do not wish on my worst enemy. It's pure torture. I went over to this lady's place to cuddle. We had set the limit beforehand we wouldn't do anything sexual. Halfway through the night I wake up to her using my hands and body in conjunction with her toys to please herself. Sometimes it feels silly. But it really messed me up. Who is the most famous person you've spoken to? I was seeing a Broadway show with my mom in 1992. At intermission she found me in the downstairs lobby and excitedly said, I just saw Meryl Streep in the bathroom. I said, please tell me you didn't say anything to her and you just left her alone. She said, I was very good, and didn't say anything. Look, here she comes now. And I said, I'm glad you didn't say anything to her, because that's Glenn Close. Guy Fieri. I was drunk, bar hopping, it's like 10 p.m. And I am walking along to the next bar. Dot and I am like, that guy looks like Guy Fieri. He's walking towards me. So as we pass, I give him a second look and I am like, that guy actually really does look like Guy Fieri. So I pass him, and a second later I decide. There is no way that guy isnt Guy Fieri. So I turn around and shout, hey, you're Guy Fieri, and he turns around and he's like, yeah. And I respond, that's cool. Then I turn back and continue to where I was going because I realized I didn't really have anything more to say to him other than that. He was by himself too. No entourage, no crowd. Nothing. I guess he might have been scouting out food spots in the area or something. Neil Armstrong. I was at the NASA Museum at Cape Canaveral, British tourist, but I also happened to be a teacher. They have an education center, where teachers etc. can go and get loads of freebies for use in school. Whilst there, Neil Armstrong came in with his grandchildren and began greeting and chatting with people at random, including me. He was pleased to meet a British teacher of STEM and was a lovely bloke. Everyone, including me, was in awe. He made time for everyone, but mainly the kids who were there with their teachers. I got pics of kids just staring open-mouthed in awe of him after it was explained who he actually was. My wife took my son to a local comic con six years ago while I had to work. Struck up a conversation about the weather with a nice older gentleman. Two days later she hears his voice on TV and says that guy sounds exactly like him. Proceeded to show her his picture and confirmed she chatted about the weather with Batman, Adam West. Carrie Fisher. I was wearing a red Darth Vader shirt that said, Choking Hazard, and she laughed when she saw it, and said, I love your shirt. I was trying not to gush, and asked her if I could pet her dog Gary. We chatted for a few, mostly about Gary. She was super warm, and funny. It felt almost like talking to a sister rather than a film star. I was in high school with Jared Leto. I spoke to him a few times and every time he acted like a bully. I would describe him as an asshat. Michael Jackson. When I was little in the 80s my family lived in LA and I took dance classes at the same studio as Nicole Richie. 
One day her dad Lionel showed up to pick her up from class with his friend Michael. He looked exactly like he did on TV at the time with the military-style jacket with a bunch of glittery stuff on it etc. I was too awestruck to say anything except hello. He was very quiet and polite. Paul Rudd. At a convention. I gave him a cupcake. I'd like to think he ate it. Late edit. Hear the picture and the cupcake in question. Gordon Ramsay told me to fuck off after I said I prefer Jamie Oliver. Kevin Bacon. Didn't recognize it was him. Politely asked if his flight companion was Kira Sedgwick whom I recognized, SMH. His expression was of mild surprise which then made me realize I was missing something tears of joy. Steve O or Mitt Romney. Kinda hitting both sides of the spectrum. I spoke with Bill Murray, and his four or five boys, can't remember. I took their order when I worked at an in out Burger. He was still the coolest dude in person. When they left after eating he turned towards me and gave me a sort of salute wave. Jason Statham. Went to cut a tree down at his London house. He yelled at us to be careful dragging branches down the side of his newly painted fence. To be fair he had a point. Stan Lee. Met him at Comic Con and the line to meet him got delayed because he took a nap. Amy Lee from Evanescence. I was working first aid at a gig and she came out after the show and started chatting to us while we were waiting for the venue to empty out and get the all clear to pack up our post. She was genuinely shocked to learn I was only 15 or 16 and gave me a hug, for all my work helping their fans. Lady Gaga. Served her a drink at a Halloween party in a nightclub once when I was bartending. Great smile, very friendly, and a lot shorter in person than I would have thought. 10 out of 10 would serve her a drink again. Conan O'Brien. I worked at Dodger Stadium selling beer for the 2018 World Series. He calls me over and bought a couple of beers. Looked at him and said, well, I guess I don't need to check your ID. He said, that's sweet, and chuckled. He tipped me $10 too. Not to brag, but when I was a kid I met Santa Claus at the mall. Edit. I see I have gold. Pretty new to attention like this, so I am assuming it's customary to say thanks? I met Simon Pegg when I was working as a cashier at Borders and I love to share this story because he was such a nice and funny guy. It was like a Tuesday in the afternoon and the place was empty. He came up to my with some stationery and I started ringing him up. The entire time I was thinking he looked so much like him, but I didn't think it was him since I wasn't in the UK and as far as I knew he wasn't filming a movie in Chicago, so it was a pretty quiet transaction. After it was done and I was handing him his bag with his stuff I jokingly said, Has anyone told you that you look like the guy from Shaun of the Dead? He replied, I am the guy from Shaun of the Dead. Back around 2014-2015, Peter Mayhew said he liked my Han Solo costume. I'll always remember that.